and Apo Johnny and Relay is in the house. Woo! Yes, 99 years old Mas and... Ko, happy kayo. <laughs> Uy, parang ano ah, parang campaign commercial. Okay, 99 and counting. Wow. 99 yes. and waiting. And waiting, waiting for 100. Oh, uh, waiting. Okay, waiting for 100. Rina. Don't ever think that you have all the time. Anything can happen. That's true. Like make it long, can make it short. Mm -hmm. Just just ride along. Enjoy your life, whatever it is. Is that your secret? I have no secret. <laughs> I'm like a oh. wind thrown into a river and taken along wherever it will bring me. Your life story is really one for the books since you were young. Nobody can uh, follow my life. It's so Each life is better. unique. But you remember everything since you were born? Yes. My dad, I was born almost at the turn of the century. 19th century, I was 1924. Aguinaldo was still alive. Aglipa was alive. <laughs> Quezon was alive. Si Apo talaga. Ospenya was alive. What about Adam and Eve? Ah, Lapu -lapu, mo na Lapu -lapu, Lapu -lapu was still being <laughs> talked about. No, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Ah. Okay. So, of course, you know that. That's the first question everybody wants to ask. Uh, you know, how you're, many girls uh, how did many, I love? <laughs> you, can also, you can also answer that question. How uh, many girls? All, all, I, all okay. I have to do is to sing a song to all the girls I loved before. You are welcome to start right now. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I want a number. Suddenly, you don't remember, huh? huh? Suddenly, you don't remember. There are some that I do not remember. <laughs> by choice. <laughs> by choice. Okay. Sometimes so, by amnesia. <laughs> selective. <laughs> selective amnesia. Okay. okay. Pero sa babae lang po yun. Ah. Pero pagdating sa kanyang talambuhay, you remember everything. I cannot recall anymore, but uh, the, the scenes are still fresh in my mind. Uh -huh. But... Sometimes the faces, the names of the characters involved are uh, fading. You are very open about being anak salabas. Yes. You yeah. always say that. that Why? Is, that, Why? That, that, Why? That is reality. My father was uh, married. He has children. He saw my mother. She was young and widow, and then they embrace each other, they produce a Juan, Juan Ponce, Juanito. <laughs> Totoo ba? Embrace lang talaga. <laughs> Ganun pala nung mga panahon na yun, ano? Tinginan lang, uh, nakakabuo na. I, I, did my, I did not mind it. Right. In fact, in my school, mm -mm. they used to shout at me and say, eh, bastardo yan eh. Ah, ganon? <laughs> How did you take it? I didn't mind it. You didn't mind it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the war broke out, and I just got the... And the bastardo oh. is me now. Mm -hmm. And what were they? Correct. Exactly. Do you think that had an effect um, that made you I, hung? I, I did not intend that. I did not hope it. Right. It happened. Mm-hmm. Your personal history, you know, all the hardships produced a hunger for you to excel. Things happened to, in my life that changed what I wanted to be. And then I, I diverted my path. I wanted to be an engineer. Something happened. I saw that 
people are not equal. So I changed my course. I became a lawyer. Ah, ganun pala yun. Hmm. I see. Your hardships as a child or as a teenager, I only found out today that... That is why nobody can argue with me. Because? Because I passed through all kinds of trade. I became a fisherman, I became a farmer, I became a road worker, I became a lumberjack. Anything. Naging yaya to pa feed daw. myself. Yeah. I never wore a pair of shoes or slippers until I was 21. Nakapaa ka lang apo? I only finished first year before the war. Mm -hmm. My father, when I arrived in Manila <coughs> for the first time and met him, took me to Malabon. And when he talked to me, where did you go to school? Well, I said, in the town of Gonzaga, a remote town, a sleepy town, full of boulders, no road. Wow. I have to walk the seacoast and rugged uh, terrain. And she said, your English is punk. I do not know what he meant by punk, but mm. that's how he <laughs> called maybe it. it. Maybe it sounded Ilocano. And then, what did you finish? I said, I'm only fir first year high school. You're too old to be in high school. So he, he talked to the Mariner sisters. Sister David was the director of Marinol in Malabon, St. James. They enrolled me in the second semester of Tergir. I could not graduate because I cannot account for my uh, subjects in second year and first, year, first semester of third year. So I had to go back to the school that expelled me to get a certification that I was studying there. And I took a validating examination in Centro Escolar. Oh. I graduated 1947. Wow. Your memory is still so sharp, mm. huh? Do you still remember the days with the Japanese, ah, yung mga Hapon? Yeah, yes. What can you not forget about those days? The tortures that I went through. 90 days in the hands of the Kempetai. 90 days of hell. I could feel the blade of the samurai on my neck. I was beaten up. I stayed in a dungeon where the only way I could distinguish day and night is pin lights filtering into a four by four wooden poles put together in front of myself, which is concrete at the back, concrete on two sides. Mm -hmm. And the entrance is Half a meter, you have to crawl inside. Wow. You do your thing inside, in a barrel. Wow. You sleep on a <clears throat> cemented floor without any mat or blanket. I had my clothes as a guerrilla, which I never took off for 90 days without any bath. Wow. And I live on a bowl of rice, sometimes it's spoiled with what they call tahuri on top and a, an alpine milk, can, mil, can of milk mm -hmm. for water, ration every day. How do you think you survived that? I was used to hardship. Were you prayerful? Uh, in my youth, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because of poverty, I used to eat only once a day, sometimes not even once. 
Wow. At 17, 18? I started becoming a fisherman at the age of seven. Wow. That's child labor. Today, that, today that is child labor. <laughs> but in the province, there's no such thing, right? Yeah, none of you could imagine what I went through. That's why when I, I discuss things in the Senate or in the House or in the Cabinet, I, I, could, I know what they're talking about. <laughs> Farming, right. fishing, mm. killing. Mm. Nobody can argue. <laughs> if they had the, the mm. experience, yes. Yes, yes. So um, you became a lawyer, but when you first met your biological father, mm. well, did that have a big effect on your mindset? Yeah, he asked me what I wanted. And I said, nothing. I just want to be educated. Mm. In fact, when he died, I, I gave all my share of the inheritance to my brothers and sisters. I did not receive any one centavo. Why? They needed it more than I did. Mm. I knew I can take care of myself. Mm. Your education, taking up law, is what opened your eyes to politics? Politics was out of my my ambition. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to go into politics. It just happened. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I was uh, busy as a lawyer, organizing businesses for foreign companies. Dole Pineapple, United Fruit, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. Dole Pineapple is still in Mount Matutum. The banana plantation was in Davao. I also did that. Mm. And it was his staff because I was investigated by <clears throat> Senator Tanyada and uh, Alejandro Almendras, Blue Ribbon and Agriculture. In fact, I, I nearly came to blows during a hearing with Almendras because he was pointing his finger at me. And I told him, <clears throat> Mr. Senator, please do not point your finger at me. You killed Japanese? I did too, as a fighter for my country. If you want to settle the matter, let's go out. <laughs> so, umatrasha. <laughs> and on that day, I was already living in in Urdaneta uh, village. We transferred our law office from Des Marinos in Manila to the corner of Paseo de Rojas in Ayala. I did not go to my office, I went home. I was watching a black and white TV. And all of a sudden, my telephone rang. And he introduced, somebody introduced himself as Colonel Vicente Raval. And said, what, I, what, what, what do you want? I want to talk to attorney Enrile. This is he. I said, what can I do for you? The Senate president wants to talk to you. I thought it was about the row that I had in the Senate. And it's in the book. And uh, yes, I said, I'll dress up and see him. No, 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 no. He said, he wants to see you. No, he said, I can go to him. He does not have to come to see me. Then all of a sudden, there was a lull. Then another voice was on the other end. And he said, Johnny, he said, I have never met you. I would like to have dinner in your house tonight. So what can I say? And who was this person? Ferdinand Marcos. And that started everything. Yeah. So your first... He came, he came to dinner in the house. Yes. 
That was my first time to meet politicians of that caliber. He was accompanied by him. And my first time to meet Kokoi, General Bear, Romy Edu, La Jun Ledo, and Roque Ablan. So and that started it. I still remember his attire. White, black shoes, black, black uh, necktie, white shirt, and pin that creamy suit. Mm. And he came, and he wanted me to run for Congress. Ah. And I said, I cannot. I have, to, uh, I have many clients, I cannot leave them. But, yung pala, hindi yun ang talagang pla, plano niya na eh, kung bakit gusto niya ako makausap. Eh, karoon siya ng problema sa probinsya ng Cagayan. Dahil he was banking on the Solid North vote. This was at a time when the Nationalist Party was going to hold a convention to pick out their candidate for president. The delegates of the Nationalist Party in Cagayan, of which I was a member, was committed to Pelais, money Pelais, but I did not. And so, naging puwang yun sa solid north. That was the problem. Mm. When he came, he did not tell me about the problem. The following day, after he came, my bosom friend, my best friend, classmate in UP, Rafael Salas, called me up and said, you met the Senate President last night, didn't you? Yes, I said, why do you, know? why do you ask? Why don't you? <clears throat> I want to talk to you about something. Why, I said, I'm working for him. I am his campaign manager. For what, I said, for the convention of the Nationalist Party. So I talked to Paeng, I said, What's the problem? The delegates of Cagayan are committed to Pelaez. Can you fix it for the Senate president? I will try, I said. So, in short, what I did was, I talked to the delegates of Cagayan to vote for Pelaez in the first balloting. But if none of the candidates would get the needed vote to be the nominee, then we will swing our vote to Marcos. But I, was, I committed myself to Marcos. And that is exactly what happened. In the first balloting, there were five of them. Fernando Lopez, Hill Puyat, Pelaez, Tolentino, and Marcos. Marcos got 555 votes, the highest. Second was Pelaez, Fernando Lopez, Tolentino, and Hilpuyat. Withdrew. In the second balloting, Pelaez and Ferdinand Marcos. Fought it out. Marcos got 777 votes. That's why he's very fond of the number seven. Ah. Everything is seven, seven. Mm. Lucky number nga daw yeah. yan, yes. And he became the candidate for president. Oh. That was my first contact in, mm. in, act, in politics. In politics, yes. And from there, mm -hmm. I thought that was the end of it. 
Then he got, they, they continued calling me until there were so many issues about the issues against President Marcos. I, uh, I eventually turned out to be a part of his legal team and became mainly one of two lawyers who served him all the way throughout his campaign. Ding Dong, Tihan Ki Hanai. If you remember the Iginu Hitler Tadhana that really made President Marcos win, we handled that. Mm. And from there, it catapulted me everywhere. Everywhere. In the Secretary of world. Justice, Secretary of Finance, Secretary of National at, Defense. At any given time, during the Marcos period, I had six positions, concurrent positions. Concurrent? Yeah. What are those? Well, first I was under Secretary of Finance. I became, <coughs> for, for the first time, an under secretary chairman of the Philippine National Bank because there were many problems, legal problems. Then I became acting insurance commissioner. I became acting commissioner of customs, member of the board of industries, so forth and so Marami. Kaya po ninyo yun. Every day my desk was clear. <laughs> What is your working style that you were able to do all of that? I go over all the documents and sign them and finish. I had good stuff. At a time when you're so busy, how do you rest? You mm -hmm. sleep well? When I go to bed in those days, in two minutes, I'm out. <laughs> Suerte. <laughs> Not everybody can do that, huh? Mm. Okay, and you've always and been... And I do not go to, go to the CR. What? <laughs> my, 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 my sleeping was continuous. Ah, wow. You maintain your health, you work I, out? You know, I went through a lot of sickness. When I went to Singapore for a checkup, the doctors there examined me thoroughly. And then, do you remember if you got sick, very sick? Yes, I said. I, when I was young, after I had malaria, I, I got sick. I was spitting the whole night until I was spitting a greenish, yellowish bile. And then I was able to get out of it. I went through a dysentery. And then, you know, why did you ask that? You're one of a very few per persons that we know in medicine who survived that disease. Wow. It was something, a virulent kind of hepatitis. Mm. But you survived it yeah. also. I went through malaria, dysentery. I did not have cholera, smallpox. I have large vacuna. But you've been through so much. Yeah. So what is the secret, Apo? Because... And one thing, in our place, we never had any medicine. I never took medicine when I, uh, I got sick in those days. When I had malaria, the only, the, ma, the only medicine for malaria was quinine. We, ne we, nev we never had any quinine in our place. It's a remote place where I was born. Then we have a tree that uh, grows along river beds. Chinchona, chinchona ba, chinchona tree. We get the bark of that, you slice it into small pieces, boil it, one cup, reduce it to one, one, 
one spoonful and drink it so bitter. But it cured you. Yeah, it cured me. It cured you. There are so many leaves and so many roots that you can use. So you believe in herbal also? I started from there. Yes. Mm. Purgative. Mm. Coconut oil. Right. Were you scared when you had COVID? No, I, I never had any symptoms. Ah, okay. My oxygen was 99. I had no fever, I had no body aches. I have no, no loss of breathing. Mm. But I was uh, positive. And I stayed in the hospital for five days. Before that, I had pneumonia. Wow. And then That's afterwards, I got it again. But I stayed in the house already. Mm. So there's so many things to discover about you that the younger generation don't know. All they know is that you're 99 years old. It's commercialization. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And they also probably don't know that you've been active since those days up to today. You became Senate president also. What is the secret to the longevity of your career as a politician? I do not know. I did what was necessary, but I never paid or vote, bought votes. Bought votes. I lost. First time I ran in 71. For the Senate, I lost because of Plaza Miranda. Mm. They, they said, Enrile is responsible for that. The Inoy, Corpus, <laughs> and so forth and so on. Ramon Mitra, who was a very dear friend of mine in Palawan, I was delivering a speech, and then a little girl came on the stage and gave me a puppy, Tota. <laughs> <laughs> you even remember those things? Of course. And then. I was telling the vice president. The first time I met you, I said, was in Davao during a rally. You were in camiseta, I said, and then in pants. She was, she was surprised. Mm, that you remember that. So politicians can be villains, the next day hero, the next day villain yeah, again, and yeah, then the next day hero will, again. Yes. You are uh, popular. So how would you describe Philippine politics? <laughs> it's a rara, ra 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 game. <laughs> it's like uh, anything yeah, goes? Yeah, you, you have to be patient and thick-skinned. <laughs> has it evolved? Philippine politics, has it changed? Has it gotten and this, worse? This time, in the rural areas, Sad to say, but it's all money. That's why they kill, they kill each other. Would you advise a good friend or even your children to go back into politics? I, I advise my daughter to go to run. She had the votes, but in the counting, different na. Yes. Male male tempera. We try. If we do not try and and uh, do not challenge, we perpetuate this kind of system. Who will lose? The country, the people. They do not know better. Your proudest moment in, in your tenure. I never made those calculations. Mm. I mean, uh -oh. uh, anything I do is I, I never look at it as a source of popularity or hero heroism. I do it because I thought it is right. It is the right course to do it. So you also believe in change of heart. Like history changes. 
history. Um, you cannot have a set, immovable, unchangeable position in life. You have to be a realist, change course if necessary. Put your life on the line, if necessary, retreat, run away, if it's ne necessary. It's not a sign of cowardice to hide if the forces against you are too, too much to contend with. So you live to fight another day. You have to think all the time, anticipate. My God, I was three years in the jungles of this country. I started at the age of <coughs> 17, fighting the Japanese with bolt action rifles and fields and spring fields, single shot. We ran out of ammunition. What did we use? Bow and arrow, made of an ahau tree. You know, some of the fighters who fought the Japanese during the war were not like us. They ate us, the abori ab 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 aborigines of the, of the country. They were hunters. My team was uh, composed of that. Mm -hmm. Would you have wanted to become president? I, ne uh, I never intended to join the government. Uh, I never dreamed to wield power. It came. I, I served. I use it, let the people judge it, let history write about it if they want. And they can also read your book. Yeah. <laughs> not, well we read, book. not well written because I learned my grammar mm. not from teachers, but from a Marine or sister. Okay. But this is really you. I mean, this is from you. I don't, everything I said there mm. happened. Right, right. You know, the manuscript of that is with Katrina. Mm. It's about 2,000 pages. There are so many things written there that were not included. Are you surprised the Marcoses are back? If, uh, if you know, you know, you can come back. Why not a bong bong? Why not a jingoy or some, some, someone else? Why not uh, a Macapagal Arroyo? Or a Robin Padilla? Puede. <laughs> no, 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 I am not joking. I talked to that guy. He does not know how to speak English, but he has the head. What should be changed politically? The gridlock that we have. Maybe if we have to change the political system, let's try the 1973 Constitution without Amendment Number 6. Sorry, which is? The Amendment Number 6 was <clears throat> patterned after the French Constitution under the goal because at that time we wanted to hasten the reforms and presi the president at that time, President Marcos, wanted to continue issuing PDs, which until today we are using, using those presidential decrees that we prepared during martial law. In fact, then nobody can question about the 
way they were written. That's why they are still being used today. But you still subscribe to the presidential uh, form Parliamentary. of government. With the president as head of state, separate the state from the government. Politics will be played in the government area, but no politics in the state level. Then we will have probably a, a more stable, solid society. We must have a multi-party to give voice to <coughs> different groups in this society. I see you still believe in multi-party, yeah. yes. Yeah, and you can work with coalitions. We must always represent in the government a majority of the people. Mm -hmm. What do we have today? A president we have, who does not represent the voice of the majority only, only now. Bong Bong represents the voice of the majority. Yes, because he has majority of the yeah. votes, yes. But should president and vice president, yes. We should change the <clears throat> system of the Senate. In 1935, or beginning with the George Law, when the senatorial system was first introduced, Senators were elected by senatorial districts under the Jones Law. It was changed under the 1935 Constitution that was amended in 1941. 24 senators. Out of that 24 senators, 16 must always be left behind. One third will be elected every two years. Why? So that in case of any emergency where the, vice, the president and the vice president are killed, you have a majority, a quorum, Establish a government. Now, if you, if the, two, the, if the president, the vice president, it's incapacitated, die in a, an airplane, so, and we are having an election, no, but 12 senators cannot form a government. Should there be elections every three years? Which do you prefer? Money or national stability. Okay. So what does this country need? Never mind about the frequency of election. For as long as it brings peace and order and stability to the society. Because like Israel, they have to form coalitions to produce a majority. Mm -hmm. So if they have a frequent election, that's the only bane of parliamentary system. Do the politicians still knock on your door to ask your advice? Recently, I was invited by Robin Padilla. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because he was toying with federalism. I said, it's too expensive for us. Mm. Our economy cannot carry the cost. You will never retire. Retire? No, you will never because of all the people who want to know what's in your head. I, I, whenever they needed advice and they need me, what I know, they call me. I serve Corey. I serve Ramos. I serve Gloria. I serve Noi Noi. Era. 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 I serve. Marcos and Marcos. 
<laughs> Duterte. Duterte. He asked me to help him in the West Philippine Sea. What is your advice about the West Philippine Sea? How should they handle that? Well, that, for me, we have to deal with China. Negotiate. Mm. If, if China negotiates with us, what does that mean? It means China itself recognizes our right in the Philippine Sea. But China has a claim. So we can talk and share whatever there is there to, to share instead of having an arbitral award that you cannot enforce. Consuelo de Bobo. Hindi pwedeng kaaway. Paano mo awayin ang China? You need their market. They are a big country. You cannot fight a country with 1 billion, 450 million people with our 100 million. They can kill all of us and they survive. <laughs> so, Apo, what is your advice to somebody who wants to go into politics? Read. Read and read. Not trust, but books that are worth reading. He must know every nook and corner of his country. He must have full experience. Not too many are like you, huh? <laughs> you know, I'm not bragging. When I <clears throat> retired in, from the Senate in 2016, I asked myself, what am I going to do now? When I was in Camp Crame, because of the plunder case that no one has filed against me. I got a book about West Philippine Sea, written by Robert Kaplan. I said, maybe I should really study the planet. So that is what I did. I gathered books, anything about China, that's why I can discuss China, West Philippine Sea. Even Arctic, Antarctic, the whole planet today because of my readings. You've been through so much. You've done so much. What in your life is still in your bucket list? What haven't you done yet that you want to do? I've, never, I've not learned enough yet. You have not learned enough yet? I continue. You still keep reading? I can show you the books that I'm reading. Mm. What are you reading now? Uh, the Power of Geography. The Power written, of Geography. Uh, written by Tim Marshall. He wrote a book, Ten Maps That Matters in the World. Wow. Now he's, uh, he wrote a second book about Australia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and others. You don't watch Netflix? No movies? I, I, I don't waste my time in those. <laughs> okay. Unlike so many of us, right? Okay. So uh, you're aware that a lot of people are still so fascinated Huh? People are fascinated that you're 99 and still so sharp. Is there a secret? I cannot explain. Do you pray for a long life? No. No? I believe in what Omar Gayam says. Apparently not. Huh? Obviously not. <laughs> you read it and understand it. Mm. Okay, I have an assignment now. 110 stanzas. The longest poem ever written. Mm. I advise you, all of you, 
to read it. In your life now, what makes you happiest? What makes you smile? My wife. Talaga? Yeah. Oh, wow. How is she? She's in the hospital. Oh, okay. I hope she's well. <laughs> How about Katrina is right there? <laughs> yeah. She's the second one. She's the second one. <laughs> Okay, big lang cambio. She's my baby. <laughs> Forever baby. She still my, looks like my, a baby. My, my only daughter. Right, right. That's why favorite daughter because only daughter, <laughs> right? She knows more than I do. Maybe so. She made this happen. So she's, <laughs> she's really more perceptive. Yes, yes. And she's paying me a pension. <laughs> Okay, then. Ah. So, okay, it's about your wife. What is the most important thing in life? That's a big question, I know. But uh, what comes to mind first? At 99, it changes, right? Um, our priorities change. I think the most important thing in life is obvious. Your health. Yes, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, preserve it. Exercise moderately, eat moderately, mm. avoid. I was smoking from the age of 10, and it was a substitute for food when I was young. And uh, I stopped. When I was, I think, 60. Six zero? Yeah. Wow. Because uh, one day I was coughing, and when I coughed, I threw a phlegm, a very dark phlegm, on the basin of my faucet. So. <laughs> I got so scared, what I did was I got all my packets of cigarettes, crumpled them, threw them in a trash can, poured water, and then <laughs> gave, gave away all my cigarette lighters. Wow. Okay, so no I more. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. I just stopped. Mm, mm. I drink. I do not drink cold water. I drink warm water. And no more vices, no alcohol, no... No alcohol, I do not drink. Mm, okay. So those are some and of the secrets. As I said, moderation. So to the younger generation, the millennials, this is what you are saying to them. Inevitable. There will be war in our re region. Mm. China wants to dominate the world. And others do not want that. And what is the end result? Who will back out? And the only way to avoid Everyone avert? wants to dominate the world. And not only the world. They want to conquer the universe. Are you worried for... I worry for my girl and her children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And I worry for the young generation of this country. They're unprepared. They think life is easy. Life is going to be harder. You have to be very skillful to survive. How would you like to see or leave the Philippines? I would like a Philippines that can defend itself from other aggressive countries. Nothing is free. 
in this century. If America withdraws from the global arena to its own, you take care of your own export, you take care of your own imports. What do we have to, to do that? If the, the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf is blockaded, or the Strait of Malacca, where do you get your electricity? Mm -hmm. so where I'm do you get your fuel? How can you run your automobiles? How can you run your television? How can you have a job? So a more prepared Philippines yeah. that can survive is what you'd like to see. They will soon, not very far from now, they do not need workers. Everything will be done by robots. No one will Harari. Mm -hmm. He wrote Sapiens, Homo Deus, and 21 Questions for the 21st century. What huh? struck you about that reading? Well, he, he's talking about running mm. AI, quantum computing. It's happening. Mm -hmm. It's already happening. Yeah. Yes. I guess some people are really just blessed. I think you're one of them. <laughs> you're chosen. 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 So, uh, um, Apo, maybe just to everybody who had always believed in you, what would you like to tell them? About? About your message to them, you know, like, it's not very often that you get to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. And a lot of them are your fans. A lot of them idolize you, if only for the fact that you're 99 and still so sharp. Uh, they're all Filipinos. What would you like to tell them? I cannot give them any advice. Each one will find his way in this world by himself. No two persons are the same. Even my daughter is not the same as me. She's, her brain is better than mine. She was better educated. And sometimes she teaches me about people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess, uh, Apo, what you're saying is, Nag-iisa lang talaga ang Juan Ponce Enrile. Wow! You know, when I had my birthday, yeah. I had 99 candles. 100. 100 candles! I could not put out all the... That's dangerous, ah. Dangerous. Don't do that. <laughs> President Bongbong Marcos was laughing. <laughs> But I'm sure, I'm sure you can blow just two candles that says 99. Ayan! Happy birthday to you! Nagisang Juan Ponce Enrile. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you for much. It.